Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, back again with Plant Miss Day 9. We are getting so close to the end of Plant Miss, I can't even believe it. It feels simultaneously like it's been a century and like it's been a millisecond. It's basically a microcosm of 2020 itself. So in today's Plant Miss video, I'm setting up my themes of 2020 spread. I've done this a few times before, and it's really just a fun way to see all of your themes of the year on a single spread. I love being able to take a step back and seeing all the themes of the year with a bird's eye view and to get a general feel for the year as a whole. Plant Miss Day 7 I feel is a pretty good companion watch to this video, so if you missed Day 7 I highly recommend you check it out after this. In that video I did a fun little lighthearted tier ranking of all my 2020 themes, so you can watch me make little miniature versions of my cover pages for the year in this video and then go check out that video and see how I'd rank them. Could be fun as well if you watch this video and kind of figure out your own ranking and then see if our rankings are the same. So I'm not going to talk through the actual process of making all of these covers because they literally are just miniature recreations of my cover pages throughout the year. And if you've been watching my videos throughout the year, you will have seen me make the full-size versions of these already. So I thought it might be more interesting to use this video as a way to just talk about how 2020 has been, how bullet journaling in 2020 has been, what kind of impact bullet journaling has had on my life this year. I always take this time of year as a time for reflection and thinking back on the last 12 months and where I've been and where I'm going, what I've achieved, hardships I've faced. And I feel like this year that feeling of reflection is so much stronger than I have felt it in the past. And I don't know if that's just because of quarantine, being home every single day, spending 14 hours a day in my tiny little home office, barely seeing anyone other than my husband and my cats. And who knows what it is, but I do feel like bullet journaling has had quite a significant impact on how I have coped with 2020. I don't know. I thought this might be interesting. So hopefully you enjoy both the process of setting up the spread and this sort of discussion about how bullet journaling has impacted me this year. Of course, I would also love to know how bullet journaling has fit into your 2020, whether you've been one of the many people who have kind of put it aside for this year, or if like me, it's been something you've leaned on for support or used as a coping strategy. I would love to know. So please let me know in the comments. So it's interesting looking back on videos I made around this time last year because like a lot of people, I was so excited for 2020. As you all might know if you've watched enough of my content, I love even numbers or numbers that have patterns in them and 2020 is just the perfect combination of all the things I love in numbers. So I was really excited about it in general and I was really excited about the idea of re-entering the 20s and bringing back some of those flapper vibes vibes and all the rest. I know I wasn't the only one who was kind of in that headspace and obviously that inspired me to do a Art Deco inspired new bullet journal setup and also January theme for 2020. And it's it's really interesting to look back on January and see how excited I was and how that translated in my bullet journal. And I feel like you can really see for January, February, and March that excitement. You know, I started my year of gold. Everything was gilded. I was doing more intricate spreads than I've done in the past. And I was just really excited for what the year was going to bring. And then we got to March and that's when our lockdown began here in Toronto. And at the time, I definitely thought that it was going to be a short-term thing. You know, I thought, okay, you know, my husband's going to be home from work. He couldn't continue in his job at the time with the rules that were involved with the lockdown. And I was like, it'll be basically like a two-week vacation, you know, max a month, and then things will be back to normal. And obviously, little did we know that that was not the case. And this is when bullet journaling started to take on a bit of a different role in my life. Now, I will say I have used bullet journaling and art in general as a self-care technique as a way to find almost a meditative state and to kind of process things that I'm working through for as long as I have done bullet journaling or done art. But it definitely took on a bit of a different feel this year, being stuck at home, barely leaving the house, and trying to find inspiration and that creativity within myself to continue to create, to try to inspire others, to try to inspire all of you, and to create things that I could be proud of while feeling so 
to be honest, scared and overwhelmed and drained and so many other things. And you can kind of see that switch start to happen in April. I started to choose quotes that were much more specifically related to how I was feeling and what I was working through, what the world was going through. And April specifically was a bit of a darker theme because when I was setting up my April spreads, that was really the time that we were realizing that the lockdown was not going to be over in a couple weeks or a month and that this was a lot bigger of a situation than we'd expected. And I'm not gonna lie, there have been a number of times throughout this year that I've just felt like I didn't have anything left to give. You know, I get a lot of inspiration for my themes from living my life, from seeing friends and listening to new music that they recommend, from going to a local coffee shop and seeing a piece of artwork on the wall, from walking to the grocery store and passing some graffiti, hearing a new song on the radio while I'm shopping for shampoo, <laughs> seeing a particular tree in a park when I take a new route home. Normally, these are my inspirations. I get that that inspiration for my day-to-day -day life. And I was struggling so much with being stuck at home and not having any of those sources of inspiration, just having my own apartment, my own furniture and the artwork I have on the walls and whatever media I could take in from social media and the internet, YouTube, watching Netflix, and really struggling with feeling like my creativity meter wasn't being filled by anything. And every time I created something, I felt like I was draining it more and more. And there was definitely a time, probably around the summer, where I felt like I just really drained my creativity altogether and I didn't know where to turn. And if bullet journaling wasn't part of my job, I think at that point I might have put it aside for a while, as I know so many people did this year. But because it is a big part of my job and my income, I just had to find a way to persevere and to find that inspiration and to continue to create. And I am so grateful for that. I think I was able to burrow deeper into myself and find new sources of creativity internally that I haven't had to explore before because I never needed to dig so deep. I always could get more inspiration from going out and about in the world and going to see a piece of theater or going to a concert or going to the museum and not having that external creativity really opened up so much more within myself that I'm really grateful for. Being able to sit down and just spend a few hours painting or drawing or working on a new type of lettering has been very healing for me this year and allowed me to have some quiet time to myself, to feel a sense of accomplishment, to be able to create something beautiful and to maybe be able to make other people feel seen or a little less alone or maybe a little inspired or motivated or relaxed with my content. And I have really relied on that this year to keep going and to continue to try to feel hopeful about what's happening in the world and my future and everyone's future. There are some themes that I did this year that I am so proud of that I think I never would have made if this year hadn't been the way it was, if I hadn't been forced to dig so much deeper. I also feel like my skills have improved so much this year, just spending way more time at my table drawing and painting than I ever have before because I just literally have nothing else to do <laughs> other than read and watch Netflix. Obviously, I don't mean to imply that my year has been harder than anyone else's. It certainly hasn't. I know how incredibly lucky I am to have a job that was already something I could do from home before this pandemic hit. I am so grateful to have this job. I am so grateful to be able to earn a living working from home. And I feel so deeply for all of the people who don't have that same opportunity and have struggled so much this year to be able to make ends meet. And just in general, I think 2020 has really brought home how many things I have to be grateful for and really reminded me what my priorities should be and what I really care about. But on those hardest days when I was really struggling with anxiety especially, which is something that I always struggle with but has been worsened by the global situation, being able to sit down 
and work on my bullet journal or plan out future spreads has really brought me so much peace. And I'm really glad that I had this outlet this year, not only for the practical side of bullet journaling, you know, being able to remember what I have to do every day because that's hard enough. <laughs> as it is, and it gets harder the older I get, but that creative side of it and the challenge of it and forcing myself to be creative and make things and find new inspirations within and without has just been incredibly meaningful to me. So yeah, that's, I guess, all I have to say about that. I don't know how relatable this is to any of you or not, but I don't know, I just wanted to share it, I think. Bullet journaling is important to all of us in different ways, but this year really drove home how much bullet journaling means to me as that creative outlet, as the vehicle for self-care, that challenge that keeps me motivated to get up and try something new and push myself to evolve and grow and learn. And for me, that has been incredibly valuable. So I hope you enjoyed this setup of my themes of 2020 spread. Making all these tiny little thumbnails was so much fun. Some of them were more challenging than others. You may notice that on my December miniature, I did in fact make the wee bear. I actually made an even weeer bear. <laughs> the tiny bear has become even tinier and um, I checked it with a magnifying glass and it didn't look too bad. So maybe I'm getting better at the teeny tiny little drawings, who knows? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, this discussion. As I said, I would love to know how bullet journaling has impacted your life this year, whether like me, it has been a coping mechanism for dealing with anxieties about the world or whether it's something that you've put aside at the moment while other things have been more important. I would love to know. I do have a giveaway in this video. I will be giving away Notebook Therapy's Moonflower Notebook. It is a white vegan leather notebook with gold page edges, with little flowers, and a beautiful cover. You can choose which size you would like, as well as their brown pop-up pencil case. So check out the description box down below for the rules for how to enter. Good luck to everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out with me through Plantmas. I hope you're as excited as I am for the last three days of Plantmas. I cannot believe we only have three days left. And with that, I'm gonna get going. I will see you very soon tomorrow for Plantmas Day 10. Bye friends. I want to take a moment to thank my patrons for their support. These are their names. If you want to join us, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below.